Today on the John Ankerberg Show, a recent Pew report reveals 41% of Americans believe that Jesus Christ will return to earth in the next 40 years. The book of Revelation is God's message to all who are concerned about the future. It contains Jesus Christ's last words to the church on such important doctrines as what events begin to happen on earth after the rapture what happens at the second coming, the final judgment, and reveals what will ultimately happen to Satan, to the Antichrist, and to those who follow false religions. Jesus also warns and describes the terrible events that will take place on earth during the tribulation, the battle of Armageddon, and his second coming to earth. Then he describes the millennium and the wondrous things God has planned for his people in eternity future. Today, we will take you through the book of Revelation in a clear and concise manner to help you understand its message and the future events God predicts are up ahead. My guest is news journalist and prophecy scholar, Dr. Jimmy DeYoung, who has reported from Jerusalem since 1993 and through the years interviewed every Israeli prime minister. Join us for this special edition of the John Ankerberg Show. Welcome to our program. I'm John Ankerberg, and as you've heard, my guest is Dr. Jimmy DeYoung. He's a prophecy scholar. And today, we want to, as you heard, we're going to talk about the book of Revelation. And right at the beginning, I want you to listen. Some of you say, look, John, I've tried to read the book of Revelation. I just can't understand it. And that's why I want Jimmy to do something very, very special that you probably have never heard anybody else do, okay? I'm going to ask him today to give you the book of Revelation, the whole book, in 23 minutes, all right? And I want to make it so that you can understand it clearly, because God has a lot to say to you and to me. We need to hear this. And I understand there's symbols and there are things in there. We're going to help you understand those. But today, I think in 23 minutes, we'll go through the entire book, all right? And Jimmy, I'm so glad that you're here today. This Thank is a you, tough God. job I'm giving you, but uh, go at it, buddy. John, you see here from left to right on your screen, three pillars. And I let these pillars represent the three main events in God's book of Revelation. The first pillar to your left would be the rapture of the church. That's when Jesus shouts, the archangel shouts, the trump of God sounds, and we're caught up to be with him in the air. The second pillar will be the revelation or the return of Jesus Christ back to the earth. Now you'll notice there's a space in between the rapture and the return. Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 29, he said immediately after the tribulation, I will come back to the earth. And so you see the rapture and then there's a space. That would be the seven year tribulation period. We get the name from Jesus himself and then he returns immediately after the tribulation period. And then there's a space between the second pillar, which is the return of Christ, and the third pillar, which would be the retribution, the judgment, the great white throne judgment. That space in between would be a thousand year period of time. Now over here, remember, it's seven years. Here it's a thousand years, and that would be the kingdom, the kingdom and a time when Satan will be bound for that thousand years. And so you have then the rapture, the tribulation, the return of Christ, you have the kingdom period or the millennium, the great white throne judgment, and that is the retribution, and then after that eternity, future new heaven, new earth, and new Jerusalem. Now with that set in space, and these will be, I'm going to call them the bones or the skeleton of the book of Revelation. I'm going to now proceed to give some type of flesh on these bones to help us understand the book of Revelation. Prior to the rapture of the church in the book of Revelation, there are three chapters, chapters one, two, and three. By the way, after the tribulation period, there are three chapters, chapters 20, 21, and 22. Three chapters before the tribulation, three chapters after, and that tribulation period is covered in the book of Revelation by 16 chapters from chapter 4 verse 2 through chapter 19 and verse 10. Let's look over here now at the first three chapters. 
The book of Revelation presents Jesus Christ in three areas, his person, his power, and his program. In chapter one, we see him in his person and his power. In verse 14 of chapter one, we see Jesus with white hair, depicting his purity, his longevity, eyes like flames of fire, his x-ray vision. The Bible says in many locations, he sees every step of our going on this earth. And then we see his feet like they'd been burned in the furnace. Well, that's brass burned in the furnace, which is depicting judgment, his face like the sun in its very strength, his countenance, looking out, and there is the resurrected, soon coming Jesus Christ. So that's the person. When you move down to verse 18, Jesus says, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. That's the power of Jesus Christ, the man who resurrected from the dead. By the way, that is the cornerstone of our faith. We have to believe that he did die on a cross to take away our sins. That is key. And when we accept him as our Lord and Savior, that is what we have as our understanding to give us eternal life. You can do that. And we'll, of course, tell you how to go to the Word of God to get the assurance you have eternal life as we conclude our study through the book of Revelation. So then you have the person and the power. And then in verse 19, after he is resurrected, here's what Jesus said. He says to the apostle John, Write the things which thou hast seen, the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. Again, that is dividing the book of Revelation. There's so many simple ways to approach the book of Revelation. Those things which were would be chapter one. Those things which are would be chapters two and three. And those things which happen hereafter, chapter four through chapter 22. So that's chapter one. Chapters two and three would be the letters to the seven churches of Asia Minor. Now we know Asia Minor today as modern day Turkey. And on the coast of the Aegean Sea, you start with Ephesus and he goes all the way around an oblong circle till he covers seven churches. John was the pastor at the church at Ephesus, but he was most likely a circuit riding preacher and he would go to all the other churches having an input into the development of those particular churches. So you have Ephesus, Smyrna, you go keeping going up the coast of the Aegean coast there, you come to Pergamos, and then you go inland, you go over to Thyatira, Sardis, you come down into Philadelphia, and finally into Laodicea. And Jesus Christ writes a personal letter to each of those seven churches. It's a very practical letter. He says, I know thy works, and I have somewhat against you, well, that's five of the churches he speaks that way to. But Smyrna and Philadelphia, he has no condemnation of them. So that's chapters two and three. The first pillar to your left on the screen would be the rapture of the church. Jesus will shout, the archangel will shout, the trump of God will sound. That's the rapture, we'll be caught up to meet him in the air. That's 1 Thessalonians chapter four and verse 16 and 17. Chapter four and verse two of the book of Revelation, we see someone on a throne. By the way, chapters four and five are the only window that we have into the third heaven. If you wanna know what's in the third heaven, you go to chapters four and five of the book of Revelation. And there in chapter five and verse 12, to be exact, you see 10,000 times 10,000 angels. That's a hundred million angels plus thousands and thousands more singing worthy is the lamb. And then as we move into the tribulation period there after the rapture and before we get over to the return at the beginning of that seven year tribulation period in chapter six, we see the beginning of three sets of seven judgments. There are seven seal judgments, seven trumpet judgments, and seven vial judgments. In chapter six and then chapter eight, verse one, you have the seven seal judgments. In chapters eight, nine, and 11, you have the seven trumpet judgments. And in chapter 16, you have the last of those seven judgments, which will basically take place in about a six month period of time because they are so intense on the people on the earth the Lord says, I can't continue 
any longer or all of the people will disappear. And by the way, that happens the six months prior to the return of Jesus Christ, which is your second pillar. Also in the first three and a half years of the tribulation period, you're going to have two witnesses that will be on the Temple Mount in the city of Jerusalem. These two witnesses are going to be preaching the gospel of the kingdom, that Jesus Christ is coming, and in order to go with Him into the kingdom period, you're going to have to receive Him as Lord and Savior. At the end of that three and a half years, 1260 days, it refers to there in chapter 11, starting in verse 3 and following in the book of Revelation, these two witnesses are going to be killed. They're going to lay in the streets of Jerusalem for three and a half days, which time they miraculously will raise from the dead. Now, this is going to startle the earth because they will have seen these two witnesses laying in the streets of Jerusalem for this period of time. They will have parties. They will celebrate the death of these two witnesses. By the way, the first results of the teaching of the gospel of the kingdom will be 144,000 male virgin Jews that will come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. The male part comes from chapter 14 of Revelation and the 144,000 listed there in chapter 7 verses 4 through 8. In fact, they're going to have a ministry throughout the entire seven-year period of time of going forth to preach the gospel of the kingdom to everybody on earth. Matthew chapter 24, verse 14 says, And the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to all the world, and then the end will come. And the Lord's going to protect them in that entire seven-year period of time. Well, after the resurrection of these two witnesses there in Jerusalem, there's going to be a battle in the heavenlies. Michael, the archangel, he's the commander-in-chief of the good angels in the heavenlies, is going to take on Satan, that old dragon, the devil. It says there in chapter 12 and verse 9, it's going to have all the evil angels join with him, and in the heavenlies there will be a major angelical battle that's going to take place. At that point in time, Michael and the good angels will cast Satan and the evil angels down to the earth. In verse 13 of chapter 12 through verse 17, it talks about how these evil angels, once they get to the earth, are going to try to destroy the Jewish people, the woman who brought forth the man-child. Now, why do they want to destroy the Jews? Well, the Lord has promised the Jews a number of covenants that He is going to fulfill. The Abrahamic covenant, they're going to be a people forever. The land covenant, they're going to have a piece of real estate, ten times what they have today. And they have the Davidic covenant, and that's talking about God's going to give them the city of Jerusalem, going to give them the Messiah, going to give them a kingdom. And he was talking to King David at the time. Now, King David will not start that building of that temple. In fact, the first installment of the Davidic covenant is going to be done by David's son, Solomon. And then, of course, there's the New Covenant, Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31. Sometimes we as Christians get misunderstanding what God's Word is talking about when we say, we're the New Covenant people. No, the book of Jeremiah 31, 31 says, I give my New Covenant to Israel and Judah, the two parts of the 12 tribes of Israel. So after this battle at the midway point is over, Satan on the earth, he'll never return to the heavenlies ever again throughout all of eternity. In the last half, the last half of the tribulation period, the seven trumpet judgments, that's chapters 8, 9, and 11, these judgments will take place, followed by the vile judgments, and that's chapter 16. Verse 12 of chapter 16 says that the kings of the east will make their way across what we know as the Euphrates River, natural border in the Middle East, between the Middle East and the Far East. These kings of the east will come towards Jerusalem to join with the Antichrist to take on Jesus Christ when He comes back. Now remember I told you Matthew chapter 24 verse 29 says, immediately, this is Jesus speaking, immediately after the tribulation period, I will return. And by the way, he concludes that statement with saying, in the clouds with great power and great glory. That is the time when God the Father, the Ancient of Days, spoken of there in Daniel chapter 7, the Ancient of Days will give the Son of Man 
his kingdom forever. And it's interesting, he puts this little caveat in there. He says, when I see the Son of Man, my Son, Jesus Christ, coming in the clouds with great power and great glory. That's when the kingdom is instituted here on the earth. And so after the return, that space between that and the third of these pillars, the retribution, the judgment, that kingdom is going to take place. In chapter 20, verses 1, 2, and 3, it says that Satan will be bound for a thousand years in the bottomless pit. And then in verses 4, 5, and 6, it talks about a kingdom period, a thousand year period of time when you and I will reign with Jesus Christ. Now at the end of that kingdom period, starting there in chapter 20 and verse 7 through verse 10, it talks about Satan being loosed for a season. He'll try to gather all those who are sinners on the earth to go against Jesus Christ one more time. And then at that point in time, Jesus will intercede. He will defeat Satan. He will throw Satan, the Antichrist, and the false prophet into the place called hell forever and ever and ever. By the way, Matthew says, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Anybody else that goes to hell has to make that decision to choose. That's where they want to be forever, except they have the opportunity to receive Christ. They can escape those hell fires. The fire is never quenched there. They will thirst forever. And think of every single sermon, every song that's ever been sung about Jesus Christ as the Savior. Well, that's at the end of the time of the millennial kingdom. And then the great retribution, the time of the great white throne judgment. That's in chapter 20, verses 11 to 15. All those who have died not knowing Jesus Christ, they're in Hades right now, a holding area where those lost people will remain until the great white throne judgment. They will be resurrected. They will stand before Jesus Christ. John chapter 5, verse 25 says, The Lord, God the Father, has chosen Jesus in order to judge these people. Now, that's not going to be any of us. We will not stand at the great white throne judgment because of the fact that is for lost people. And that's determined before you ever get to that point in history. And so Jesus Christ sent his souls and those who've received him, they're going to be possibly with him because the Bible does say, in the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 17, uh, that we will never leave his presence after the rapture of the church. And if he's the judge, we'll probably be there observing what's going on, but not standing before him as he, the judge, sentences all those who've rejected him in the lake of fire, which is the second death. That's the great white throne judgment. And then following that last pillar, you're looking at eternity future. The new heavens, the new earth, the new Jerusalem. That's the book of Revelation, chapters 21 and 22. And John, that's the book of Revelation. And you have a neat way of summarizing that when you get done. Do that, if you would, in just the few minutes that are left. Well, when you're talking about looking at the entire book of Revelation, it's very important that we understand God has a plan. It's laid out in the book of Revelation. And when you look at what you're looking at here in front of you, and you remember some of the words that I gave you at that time, and by the way, I'm, I'm sure it's going to be a bit difficult to remember everything I had to say. So, John, on future programs, we should probably rehearse some that we've said. And we will. And then give them a little bit more information along the way. But the book of Revelation, the rapture, if you know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you're going to miss that tribulation period. Praise God. You're going to be taken out of here. You're going to be in the heavenlies with Him. And during that seven-year period of time in the heavenlies, once we've gone there at the rapture of the church, we're going to be marrying Jesus Christ. There's going to be a celebration. Chapter 19, verses 7, 8, and 9, it's called the marriage of the church to the groom, Jesus Christ the marriage supper of the Lamb. This is an exciting time when all the Old Testament saints come and visit. 
in order to be able to be married to Jesus Christ and go to that marriage supper of the Lamb, the celebration after that seven year period of time is unfolding on the earth and all judgment in the heavenlies, we are celebrating with our bridegroom, Jesus Christ. A great time. We'll come back to the earth and that's when the kingdom goes into play. And that's when you and I will rule and reign with Jesus Christ forever. Yeah. Talk about where the Antichrist, the false prophet, and the battle of Armageddon may come in before we leave. Well, at the beginning of the seven year tribulation period, remember I told you in chapter six, they are beginning the three sets of seven judgments, the seven sealed judgments in chapter six. Chapter six, verses one and two, talks about a man on a white horse. He has a crown on his head, he has a bow in his hand without any arrows, and he goes forth across the earth. Now, many think that may be Jesus Christ because they know when he comes back to the earth, chapter 19, verse 11 and following, he gets on a white horse to come back, verse 14. Those of us who have just married Jesus Christ had our seven year celebration. We'll mount white horses coming back with him. And by the way, that is the time when Jesus gets the title, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. When you look at verse 16 of chapter 19, on his vesture, on his thigh, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, God the Father is going to give him that. But the Antichrist will be in that first sealed judgment, the man on the white horse. And then at the midway point of the tribulation, halfway through that seven year period of time, the false prophet, chapter 13 of the book of Revelation, will appear to lift up the Antichrist in everything he does. Now you don't want to miss that program. It's very important to understand what's going to happen and what the rest of the world is going to have to do to deal with the Antichrist and his statue there in a temple in the city of Jerusalem, which the Antichrist has desecrated. And then we conclude the seven year period of time. That's when all the nations of the world will gather at Jerusalem, Zechariah chapter 14 and verse two. And at that point in time, I would say that's the beginning of the campaign. We use that word battle of Armageddon. It's the campaign of Armageddon. And on a program in the future, we're going to explain all of that. So you have the Antichrist, you have the false prophet appearing at the midway point. You have the campaign of Armageddon just prior to the return of Jesus Christ. Now, folks, you notice that Jimmy didn't use any notes. And that's why we have him here, because he's an expert. And the other thing that you noticed is that he quoted a lot of Old Testament texts. And we're going to tell you why, starting in our next program, why knowing the Old Testament so well helps you understand the book of Revelation. But I love the fact that almost all through what he said, we were talking about Jesus Christ doing this, Jesus Christ doing this, Jesus Christ doing that. And that's why it's the revelation of Jesus Christ. What is Jesus Christ going to be doing up ahead? And where do you fit in? And where do your neighbors fit in? Where does the world fit in? And we're going to be talking about all of that. We're going to be doing eight programs. We just did the first one, so we got seven more to do. All right? Next week, we're going to take the person and power of Jesus Christ as revealed in the first chapter and in the second and third chapter where he writes the letters to the churches. What do we learn? And I don't want you to miss it because it's not just for the seven churches that were there, but it also applies to all of the churches across the earth today. And you're one of them if you're a Christian. All right? You're in one of those churches. What does Jesus Christ say about you and your church? So I'm so glad you joined us today. And Jimmy, thanks for all of this information. Folks, I hope that you'll join us next week. Stay tuned for a special word from John. Now, thank you for joining me today. If you'd like to have all eight of our new prophecy programs entitled, The John Ankerberg Show presents Through the Book of Revelation with Dr. Jimmy DeYoung. All eight TV programs are available on DVD for a gift of $99. We also include two new study guides that complement each of the eight television programs and will be helpful for both your personal study or for your small group study and classes. 
This information will help you better understand the book of Revelation and live out its principles in your life. Program one is special. Dr. Jimmy Dion gives a complete overview of the entire 22 chapters in the book of Revelation in a single program. In program two, he describes the Apostle John's vision of Jesus in his glorified form and offers many applications for our lives today. In program three, we discuss the seven churches in Revelation two and three. Each church existed as a local congregation in the first century with their own strengths and weaknesses. And Jesus warns the churches today that have some of those same weaknesses. In program four, Dr. DeYoung talks about Revelation chapter four and the beginning of the heavenly visions the Apostle John experiences. We'll identify aspects of the 24 elders and highlight the rapture and discuss the various views people have of the tribulation. In part two of our series, we reveal the events of the tribulation period, including the 144,000 evangelists, the two witnesses, the Antichrist, and the mark of the beast. So in program five, we discuss the revived Roman Empire that will arise during the tribulation period. Program six highlights the three sets of judgments, namely the seal judgments, the trumpet judgments, and the vile judgments that will take place during the tribulation, bringing vast destruction upon the earth. In program seven, we feature Christ's return to earth at the end of the seven year tribulation period when he defeats his enemies at the battle of Armageddon and sets up his 1000 year millennial kingdom. And in program eight, we conclude with Satan's final rebellion and defeat at the end of the millennial kingdom, God's final judgment of all unbelievers and describes the believer's ultimate home in eternity future when God provides a beautiful new heaven, new earth and a new Jerusalem. To order all eight of these wonderful TV programs and the two study guides, you may call us right now at 1-800-805. 3030. That's 1-800-805-3030. Write it down. You may call that same number any day this week, 24 hours a day. Or you may also give your gift at our website at jashow.org, where we have a secure place for you to give your gift. Our website again is jashow.org. And those of you who live in Canada may call us at 1-866- 746-5803. And our Canadian website is jashow.ca.